Mark Twain on his first appearance. My heart goes out in sympathy to anyone who is making his first appearance before an audience of human beings. By a direct process of memory, I go back 40 years, less one month, for I'm older than I look. I recall the occasion of my first appearance. San Francisco knew me, then, only as a reporter, and I was to make my bow to San Francisco as a lecturer. I knew that nothing short of compulsion would get me to the theater, so I bound myself by a hard and fast contract so that I could not escape. I got to the theater 45 minutes before the hour set for the lecture. My knees were shaking so that I didn't know whether I could stand up. There is an awful, horrible malady of the world. It is stage fright and seasickness. They are a pair. I had stage fright then for the first and last time. I was only seasick once, too. I was on a little ship on which there were 200 other passengers. I was sick. I was so sick that there wasn't any left for those other 200 passengers. It was dark and lonely behind the scenes in that theater, and I peeked through the little peek holes they have in theater curtains and looked into the big auditorium. That was dark and empty, too. By and by, it lighted up, and the audience began to arrive. I had got a number of friends of mine, stalwart men, to sprinkle themselves through the audience, armed with big clubs. Every time I said anything they could possibly guess I intended to be funny, they were to pound those clubs on the floor. Then there was a kind lady in a box up there, also a good friend of mine, the wife of the governor. She was to watch me intently, and whenever I glanced toward her, she was going to deliver a gubernatorial laugh that would lead the whole audience into applause. At last I began. I had the manuscript tucked under a United States flag in front of me, where I could get at it in case of need. But I managed to get started without it. I walked up and down. I was young in those days and needed the exercise. And talked and talked. Right in the middle of the speech, I placed a gem. I put in a moving, pathetic part, which was to get at the hearts and souls of my hearers. When I delivered it, they did just what I hoped and expected. They sat silent and awed. I had touched them. Then I happened to glance up at the box where the governor's wife was. You know what happened. Well, after the first agonizing five minutes, my stage fright left me, never to return. I know if I was going to be hanged, I could get up and make a good showing, and I intend to. But I shall never forget my feelings before the agony left me. And I got up here to thank you for her for helping my daughter, by your kindness, to live through her first appearance. And I want to thank you for your appreciation of her singing, which is, by the way, hereditary. <laughs>